بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد I don't think I need to spend too much time uh, talking about the importance of prayer seeing as most if not all of you came here to pray but saying that out of all the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fard upon us why is it that he chose salah? So from the five pillars and from the actions that he Azza wa has obligated upon us, why is salah one of them? There are many actions that we have in Islam. There are many things and many good deeds that each and every one of us can perform. So why salah? Uh, any answers? Feel free to raise your hands. Yes. Because it involves frequent remembrance. Good. This can be one of the wisdoms. What else? Yes. All right. It's a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Excellent. What else? How many of you know? Uh, You're going to have to raise your voice a little bit. Uh, there's no excuse for it, sure, which, what's, which is what makes it an obligation, absolutely. How many of you know the hadith of the wali? And where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relates on Allah, that whoever takes a wali as an enemy, then I have taken him as an enemy. Are you guys familiar with this hadith? And in the same hadith, he azza wa he tells us exactly why he obligated prayer. He says that I allow my slave to draw nearer to me, with the things that I love, and those are the things that I obligated on him. So if I want to know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose prayer, why he chose fasting, why he chose zakat, and why he chose hajj, it is because these are the actions out of all of the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we literally have a buffet of actions. Yes, how I can contribute to the community, how I can give sadaqah, on how I can be in part of social programs, and how I can support different things. But these pillars, these are pillars because Allah tells us that these are the actions that I love most. And if I understand that these are actions that He Azza wa Jal finds the most beloved, then it allows me to seek solace in those actions by loving those actions myself. And part of that allows that connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the purpose is, is seeking His rahmah. That's the entire goal. That I hope and I pray that all of the actions that I do in my entire life, that just one of them, just one, Allah's mercy depends upon me and He allows me into His paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of paradise. Ameen. And it's amazing how He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His relationship with salah. And some of the wisdoms that you guys mentioned, which these are very important. The fact that I'm able to have, right, there are two types of conversations we can have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is in the prayer, and that's very formal. And there's an informal type of conversation we can have with Him azza wa as well, which is what? A dua, ahsanti, good. And this formal conversation is meant to train us. And it's meant to teach us. That when I engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a certain manner and certain etiquette that I need to have when I engage with him and when I speak to him Azza wa Jal. And if that is not enough for me, or I need to have more expression with him and more engagement with him, that he Azza wa Jal has given us two very creative outlets. And those creative outlets, one is dua, absolutely, and the other one is adhkar. I can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is praising of Him. And I can be creative in my expression of that. And if there are things I want to ask for that I don't feel the salah will necessarily fit, then I have been given the opportunity out of the prayer to do that. And look at the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's attitude towards salah. He would turn to Bilal and he would say to Bilal, he said, Ya Bilal, he says, bring, bring the coolness to us, Ya Bilal. By making the adhan and calling to prayer. And if we want to change our prayer, and we want to affect the way that we engage with our Lord, then it's very important for us to understand and change our attitude toward it. 
One of the amazing things about salah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He specifically describes it. Saying that, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْحَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That prayer prevents, prevents and stops. It prevents and stops an individual from falling into evil and ostentatious deeds. Outlandish deeds. And I always wondered about this. Because there aren't too many other deeds that He, Azza wa Jal, connects with this idea of, of doing things that are so evil. And how if I want to stop myself, and if I want to prevent myself from falling into that evil, from falling into bad situations, from dealing with people and being in circles I probably shouldn't be in, then what do I need to do? I need to turn to my salah, I need to turn to my prayer. And if I find that after this remembrance, and these five daily prayers that I have, that I'm still mean, I'm still spiteful, I'm still angry, I still am willing to hurt others and to backbite others and to look down upon others, then the first place I need to look to is toward my salah. And part of the reason that we overlook the prayer is because we take it for granted. And one of the reasons I say that, and I always found it amazing that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي وَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي That the best of you is the one who is best to his wives, and I am best to my wives. And I said, why is that? Why did he choose wives specifically? And after I got married, I understood this hadith pretty well. And that was because I found myself taking her for granted. I find myself expecting certain things from her without realizing that all of the things that are being done for me are actually favors. And it's the same thing with the salah. That the salah is a favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. It is a pathway He has given us. It is a means that He has given us in order to better ourselves. And if we truly understood on what it means to have this formal conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we would be able to better ourselves so much quicker. I would be less worried about taking somebody else's parking space for Jummah. I would be less worried about somebody else taking my prayer space that I had reserved during Ramadan. I would be less concerned with somebody cutting me off. I would be less concerned with what the security guard is telling me. I would be less concerned with being late. Because the other problem that we have with the salah is that I will rush and I might cut people off and I might shove myself into a parking place or I might push somebody out of the way and my excuse will be my salah. My salah isn't doing anyone any favors and if I'm acting that way then it didn't do me any favors either. This is the power of salah. And if we want to know the ultimate example in the ultimate reflection of how salah is to be and how it manifests, then we look to our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he was the one who prayed the most. He was the one that stood the most. He was the one that was engaged the most. And we find him to be the kindest, gentlest, most generous, bravest person to ever have lived, sallallahu wa sallam alayhi Why is it that we don't even achieve a tenth of that or a hundredth of that? If I want to be kind, if I want to be generous, if I want to be brave, then I need to turn to my prayer. I need to turn back to my conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of, how many of us are engaged with conversation and we don't even listen to what we're saying to Him? Azza wa Jal. Imagine talking to someone and just showing lip service. Imagine talking to someone and just reading off of a paper. Imagine talking to someone and not knowing what I'm saying. This is to an individual. What about the Lord that created me? What about the one that gave me the tawfiq and the blessing to stand and to make ruku' and to make sujood and to get up? How many of us know people that are unable to do any of these things. And subhanAllah, we see it around us. During prayer, we might notice 
that somebody's not able to sit between the two sajdas or to sit for tashahud. And subhanAllah, for me, it's a huge reminder that Allah has blessed me in a way that He hasn't blessed this person. How much more thankful should I be? And the amazing thing about Salatul Jama'ah, right, c- coming to the congregational prayer, is that when we come in, how many of us look around and say, okay, who am I going to stand next to? How many of us come in and worry? And the reason I say that is because, walillah alhamd, I will say this, and this is something that we should be proud of, as Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we don't care. Right, there's no list of like, okay, the poor people pray here, and the rich people pray here, or the Egyptians pray here, or the Pakistanis pray there. We should be proud of this. So when we talk about unity, walillah alhamd, I believe, I truly believe, that there are some aspects of unity that we have done very well. So we need to extend that into other sections of our lives. And how do we do that? By engaging. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can teach us manners with Him, if He can teach us how to engage Him, then this becomes such an easier an example for how we engage each other. And much of it, and even if we look at the Fatiha, or we look at some of the lessons of the Qur'an, I find it amazing that even if you look at the Qur'an, maybe 30% of it is ahkam. How to make wudu, inheritance laws, right? the different salah timings. But the rest of it is stories. The rest of it is imaniyat and enrichment. And, and why is that? And it's amazing how from there, that is where we pray. Right? That, that is what we actually recite when we're standing in prayer. So Allah forces us to take advantage of those verses. He forces us to learn from those verses. He forces us to recite those verses. And we still don't listen to ourselves, right? I'm not talking about listening to someone else. And some of us might make shorter surahs or recite shorter surahs. We don't have a lot of Qur'an memorized. But the amazing thing about the Qur'an is there's not a verse, there's not a surah, except that I can benefit and better myself from it. So even someone might say, well, I'm not hafiz. Well, the response is, that's not an excuse. I can know a handful of surahs. And every single one of those surahs is a reminder for me. Every single surah is a reminder on how my relationship with Him Azza wa Jal. And my sincerity with Him Azza wa Jal. And even if we look at the stories of all of the prophets, what are some of the commonalities that are there? The hardships that they endured, the adversities that they faced, and how they dealt with the people around them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, he says, إِنَّ مَا بُعِثْتُ لِيُتِمَّ مَكَانَ مِنَ الْأَقْلَاقِ That I have been sent to perfect character. Very simply. And if I want to perfect my character, if I want to perfect my dealings with my mother, and with my wife, and my friends, and my colleagues, and my co-workers, Allah has given me a very simple formula. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ تَنْحَاءَ لِلْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرُ I want to perfect those relationships, then I make that effort to perfect my prayer. And that prayer will have an effect on my heart. Because in it, is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot stand and then go into sajda and then come up and make ruku'ah. It's like, oh, well, you know what? I'm doing all of the parts of the prayer. No, I have to do them in the order that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prescribed to us. I have to do them in the way that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prescribed them to us. Because this is my show of complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I understand that I have to submit, and I understand what it is I'm to recite, and I understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I understand that He is watching over me, and He is giving me the power and the ability, and the tawfiq and the blessing to perform these prayers, then the only thing stopping me from getting better is my lack of remembrance. And it's amazing how a person can be in prayer and still be in a state of ghafla, still be in a state of heedlessness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. But the salah is a beautiful thing. It really is. And sometimes we feel like it can come across as a burden. But Allah has given us a baseline. 
He's given us a very baseline, right? What is the minimum I need to do? And someone might say, well, I, I don't pray. How do I start? Where should I go? Allah has allowed me. He's brought me to this majlis. He's let me hear about the salah. How do I get better? How do I? Maybe I'm in a position where I'm starting praying. This is the first prayer I've attended. The baseline is these five prayers. That's the baseline. If I want to start praying, these are the five prayers I need to start with. And then I can increase on that as much as I will, as much as I can. And I can make that effort to at the least, at the least, learn those suwar, learn those chapters that I am reciting during the prayer. Learn those adhkar, learn those remembrances that I'm reciting during the prayer. Feel the importance of every single position and how every single position is a sign of submission to Him Azza wa And each one of them, someone, we, we, there are certain positions we take for granted. But even standing, when somebody walks in or I want to greet someone, what is the first thing I do? I stand up to go greet them. Why? Because I want to honor them. So how much more so when we honor Rabbul Alameen, our Lord Azza wa Jal? And bowing and prostrating is the ultimate show of humility. I had a brother say to me, he was like, uh, when he wanted to accept Islam, he said the hardest thing for me was sajda. And I was, to, to me it was like, I didn't, I didn't get it. He was like, no, the hardest thing for me was sajda. I was, like, I was like, why is that? He said, I could never lower myself to anyone else. So this idea of lowering myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that I find the most challenging. And this is something that we need and we see and we do. But time and again, we take it for granted. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq. I ask Him azza wa to make us from the musalleen. I ask Him azza wa to allow us to benefit from our prayer. I ask Him azza wa to make us from those individuals who benefit from their prayer in a way where it prevents us from falling into fahshai wa munkar. Wajazakum al khair. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala khairi khalqin. Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahbihi wa sallam. Wajazakum al khair.